Weather, environment and climate, it's a team sport. Observation sharing is fundamental. The observations from my country and your country and somebody else's country, we need to have them all so we can understand the dynamics of the atmosphere. And we see that that creates uh, an important value for citizens because the work we do together means that weather forecasts are good. UMASAT Polar System Second Generation is a follow-on from our current METOP polar orbiting system. This is different to what we have with METOP. With METOP we have one platform. So we are uh, moving into a concept where we have a two satellite system. New elements that are, that are coming on top allow us to broaden the scope of our applications. They will fly in the same sun-synchronous orbit and they will fly 180 degrees apart. So they will be following one another in orbit. And it will carry a, a payload of 10 instruments in total. So really a very complex and diverse payload. EPSSG A platform will carry a suite of imaging and sounding instruments, including a radio occultation instrument. Then on the EPSSG B platform, there's a bit of a separation in, in type of instrument. We will have the Argos 4 data collection system instrument, microwave imaging instruments, scatterometer, and, and radio occultation. We are very excited with the upcoming generation of, uh, of satellites. Many of these instruments are really uh, cutting edge. Uh, they are the first time uh, that uh, they, they are uh, up in space. The new satellites will provide better resolution that will allow us to, to better look at the processes in the atmosphere. EPSSG is, uh, has a lot of innovation, but uh, it's also very important to have the continuation from the existing uh, observation platform. Everyone who currently uses satellite data needs, crucially, to have a continuity of data. By providing continuity, we're serving the climate community. We're bringing the record from METOP, which started in 2006, forward by an, another 20 years. So we'll have a very long record, you know, looking towards 40 years overall. Member states use EPSSG data mainly to make weather forecasts. So they will assimilate the data into their models. They make forecasts for people. EPSSG data is also used in oceanography application area. The EPSSG is for us a, a crucial source of information for our global numerical weather prediction system. So it will really improve uh, the, the quality of our global forecast to be able to provide to our citizens warnings for a significant event earlier than we are doing today. We are doing uh, ice charts on the Baltic Sea areas uh, together with other Nordic countries, but when we get more better data, we will get more better information and it will be uh, more safe and efficient for the ships. With these new satellites, we'll, we'll have more tools to issue warnings in time and this is really important for the society, really. I mean, we are getting closer into the clouds and, and uh, that's really where the weather is, is going on. Forecasters can monitor in more detailed way uh, the evolution of uh, storms. Of course, we all have to learn how to really effectively use the new data. It is partly a training issue. It is partly a technological issue. You need a lot of research into how to exploit the data for the benefit of the people. We are expecting no less than a revolution to weather forecasting. And what you get is the protection of life and property, that's weather service speak for keeping people safe and also being able to exploit the opportunities that weather, weather can bring. So for agriculture or for solar energy or wind energy, so all of these areas. But it's important to make those cases so that the exploitation of the data can, uh, can be made real.